Hey Teal Tears, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for coming and checking out this video. Today we're going to talk about Magia OS. But before we do that, I would like to kindly invite you to please click that join button down below and help me out. You can always go to buymeacoffee.com, I believe, and sign up for me over there under the Linux tube and buy me a coffee over there. There's a couple of tiers you can join there. Also, if you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you uh, get notified whenever I drop a new video, and all of you hit the like button. It only helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and it gets me up there to where people can see more of my videos. Magia OS. What is Magia OS? Well, Magia OS is an operating system that is a fork of Mandriva. It's French based and it is maintained by a community of people. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what it looks like. Uh, you have this welcome that comes up. You have these tabs up here at the top. The, you have the welcome, as you can see, this is Welcome to Magia, and we're going to guide you through some important steps, okay? And then Media Sources. So basically, this is where you could select your resources, uh, your repos, actually, I should say. And it's a because it's root level, you have to put in your root password. And, of course, these are the ones that are already enabled. Now, mind you, it comes with core, non-free, as you can see right here, non-free, right? And then there are Tainted. And then you have the core 32-bit releases. Then you have the non-free 32-bit releases over here. Of course, they all have backports for each of their different variants that they have. So you could uh, add those there. Over here, you have your update. This is where you can check for system updates or advisories of updates. Uh, this is the MCC, which is the Magia Control Center. If we open it up, this is where, once again, this is root level stuff. So you put in your password. And you could like install and remove software. You could update your system. We're just going to check for updates. I'm not going to do that right now. You can configure, you know, update frequencies, all that good kind of good stuff right here. Configuration, the sort, the media sources list again. These are all those same repositories that we did did over there, which is it's a redundant issue, but you know it's in there. So I guess it's another way of getting to it besides this welcome menu. Also, you have your hardware section here where you could browse and configure hardware, set up sound configuration. Check this out. You can actually do, you can enable Compiz, another Compiz included distribution. Pretty cool, huh? Compiz is, takes me back to the old days. Uh, you got keyboard and mouse that you can do here, printers you can set up, and also your scanner. Uh, they have a network section over here where you can do internet, you know, networking center, you know, set up proxies, you know, host definitions, VPNs, you can configure all kinds of good stuff. Under the system tab section, you have administrative tools like you can view and search system logs. You can open up a console as administrator. You can manage the user system. You can import Windows documents and settings, I guess. So I guess you could set up like... Uh, uh, like PDFs to be used with, you know, an executable program in Wine. Uh, I guess it would install that. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing there. If you know what it is, leave a comment down below. Uh, and also you can set up snapshots. Now, this is really nice because you can install Drac Snapshot. And it'll do like Snapper does for Arch. So that's really cool. Uh, under Network and Sharing, you can set up samba you can set up drivers for samba you could do nfs shares uh you could do uh web dab shares i mean they've got it completely set up to do cool stuff right off the bat and also for your local discs they've got their disc partitioner they've got their dvd rom and they've got your hard disk partitions that you could do for security of course you can configure system permissions you can set up your personal firewall you can even set up an ipv6 firewall and then they also have advanced setup for network interfaces and firewalls. They've got parental controls as well. So, I mean, they've got some added stuff as an independent that is really, really nice if you're a mother or a father and you're trying to monitor your children's behavior and accessibility online. And then, of course, they got stuff where you could set up your boot system. You could set up your login, which is you can switch between 
I would say uh, launch graphical environment when your system starts. No, I do not want. Yep, no, and you, tell, you can actually, if you want to, you can tell which user to log in automatically. So you can customize that. That's kind of cool. And also your display manager, you can switch between SDDM and XDM, which is X Display Manager. And of course, under system boot, here you can set your bootloader. Uh, you can set up which device, you can set up whatever you want. I mean, it's kind of cool. That's Magia Control Center. For install software, of course, you can use RPM Drake or GNF Dragora which is what I was saying, uh, DNF Dragora, oh, it's not installed, so you have to install it. RPM Drake, it is installed, so I'll open it up, and you can take a look at it, it's initializing, it's probably running, you know, the available packages, you know, getting all that information ready, and at the, at the ready for you, so see, here we go, so here it is, you know, like you got emulators, right? These are game emulators that are all categorized. So it's kind of like Synaptic Package Manager only for RPM uh, Package Manager. So there you go. Uh, under Applications, of course, this tells you the applications that you have and that you could either install or are installed. Like there, if it's installed, it says installed. If you want to install it, you can click on install it and it's going to want to do that. So we hit install, give it our root password and it starts to install it it says we need to install all that stuff so let's do it and boom it's installing and downloading them just like that so this might be a helpful little area that you can go to to kind of install stuff that are already categorized here like under games you've got steam uh, let's click on that see what it does oh i need to install the 32-bit repositories which i didn't but you can always go back to media sources and do that so if you go to media sources edit software put in your root i don't know why it opens up down there but we need a 32 bit so we're going to do this one this one and we're going to do the non-free this one and this one and what the heck let's do the tainted Okay, so we should be covered on everything. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to go back to Applications. We're going to go to Games. And we're going to hit Steam. And hopefully it works this time. One, two, three. Put in our stuff. And it's installing just like that. So we'll let it do its thing. Uh, while it's doing its thing uh, for video, oh, it won't let me move on, will it? <laughs> All right, it's got to do its thing, and then you can move on. That's kind of sucky. So I'll go ahead and pause the video when it's done, then we'll continue with our review. Okay, so it finished, and it is apparently installed, as you can see right here. So that is kind of cool. It didn't take too long. It took about, you know three, four minutes or what have you. So there, there's that. I mean, and then like under audio, they've got audio codex. They've got, you know, Clementine, all this. They got Office. They don't, they have LibreOffice, LibreWriter. So, I mean, they've got some stuff here that you can do. Now, that's not the full amount of applications that they have to install. Mind you, those are just featured one. Here are some of the populars. It says in this yellow thing, you know, they're popular applications that a lot of people install or that they've noticed when they first set up Magia, so they just offered it in their welcome menu. So there's more to be had in the software center like DNF Drake, okay? Uh, and then this tells you what your configuration is right here, so you can look at it, know what you're dealing with. And so that is a look at the Magia welcome window. And you can handle quite a bit through that right there, just right out of the box as you're trying to set up your operating system. So now, this is your standard KDE Plasma desktop. And we can go here to the system settings as soon as it opens. And we'll go down to the bottom. Go to system information. We're looking. So now that's the thing. Wow. Okay. That's the thing. When you're dealing with... Um, these independent distros, because they're 
probably don't have a lot of people that are packaging and maintaining their packages and doing all that stuff that are also developing and that kind of stuff. So uh, sometimes their software is a little behind the times. Like I think we're on 526, I believe, for Plasma or 527. And right here, they're only on the 520 version. Uh, Frameworks is way higher than that. I think it's like 5.90 or something like that. So you're looking at your more i guess this would be considered way lts you know because they're very you know older packages however though there is magia 9 and it's in its it's in its beta stage right now the reason why i didn't do the preview of it because it didn't seem like they did a whole lot of changes and the release notes didn't have a whole lot about what they did into it yet so when it drops i'll revisit it and do a video on it as well so as you can see you're, they're using a little bit more outdated stuff in their applications uh, like firefox let's take a look let's open up firefox down here and let's see what version we're on let's go ahead and make this full screen we're going to check it out we're going to go to help then we're going to go to about and we're going to look and yes you see it's 91.3 they're like on 100 and two or three maybe they're in the hundreds i know that so yeah this is definitely not the newer firefox so there you have it you know there once again more older outdated programs but still functional and they do the job so and also it's not to say you can't go to the git hub or the repo itself for firefox or maybe go to dnf try to see if they're more updated in dnf and download new updated software and you're good to go uh so in the the regular standard uh, configuration of the desktop, you have trash icon, which they put up there, and then you've got the join Magia community. Now, let's go and take a look at that because that's kind of cool, and it deserves a little you know highlight there. It obviously launches Firefox, but it goes to their Magia.org page, but the contribute page, and this is where you can actually help contribute to Magia. Once again, community-based release needs the community. You can help writers using an advocating the project, which I can be considered as advocating the project by doing this review. So that's awesome. Uh, writing and copywriting and documenting, translating, triaging, testing and QA. So these are all different, you know, coding and packaging, uh, web tools, and system design, mirroring, all, all kinds of stuff that you can do or just simply donating. So go there. If you really like this distribution, you want to help, help please because that's what we should do so you have those icons on the desktop then down below on the bar you have your standard application launcher right here next to it you got your show your desktop here you've got your uh this the windows that you can switch into for uh your virtual desktops um you have dolphin file manager which is their standard kde suite of tools file manager and then they have the systems settings right here where you can go and change your global theme let's take a look and see what they have for their global theme so they don't have a dark version of their theme, but they do have oxygen and my breeze dark which is the only dark theme they have but because it's plasma you can go right down here at the bottom click here to get globally new themes and you can search through here and download new themes if you didn't know this, which I don't know many people that have used KDE that don't know this. But if you don't use KDE, well, you can do this. Uh, you can like go to Plasma Elementary, all that good stuff. And I can do a little video on how to customize KDE down the road. I don't want to take away from this distro review. So, uh, so anyhow, you could do that to add any global dark things. But it, it's kind of surprising they only have their one bright breeze instead of a dark breeze when they know that dark breeze is so common but either way there is that uh your t standard typical um kde settings with your global themes and settings uh if you go to uh let's see weird where is their death usually you could uh do your backgrounds and such let's go back to appearance does it let me go back to the home let's go home screen locking display configuration uh just uh apply oh, crap i guess i switched to breeze dark so yep i did i switched to the breeze dark okay so let's go oh configure desktop and wallpapers on a right click on the desktop and they only have these two wallpapers to pick from 
Very interesting. So let's go to that one, see what that one looks like. That looks kind of sexy. I like this look. It looks kind of sexy, but, you know, this one isn't so bad either. You know, if you have a dark theme, usually having a brighter wallpaper kind of offsets it and makes it look nice. But, yeah, so we'll just stay with the original one. Anyhow, there's that. So then they have next to that is the Magia Control Center, which we've already looked at, and Firefox, which we've looked at. And then over here is your system tray with your date and time, uh, your... Uh, New updates applet, which will let you know for any updates that come from Magia. Then also your Ethernet, which is your net applet, uh, to show you connectivity type. And of course, they have the sound here, which I don't know, it comes already muted, but let's unmute it and it's unmuted. So there you go. Oh, and we'll turn it up. So now we have sound, as you could hear. You hear that? We had sound. There you go. So now you have sound. Of course, the hidden tray notification where you got your key organizer reminders, notifications, devices and disks, KDE Connect, the standard KDE centric hidden notification area. Now let's briefly take a look at some of the apps, you know, hit the important ones that are installed. So you're looking at, oh, they got FileZilla. Ooh, they got FileZilla installed, Firefox, KDE Connect, uh, KTorrent, Network Center, under and this is all under internet for under office the most important ones are uh, LibreOffice. they got address book ocular and they got kmail so there you go for graphics they've got digicam that's cool you got a like a webcam thing uh they have gimp they have color paint and LibreOffice draw for sound and video the important ones here are they've got clementine which is their audio player caden live mpv and pavu for tools uh, they have K-Write, which is okay, uh, but they don't have Kate installed. They got the Magia Welcome, Regional Settings, Spectacle, System Settings, and uh, Arc, which is your uh, system archiver. And Console is their um, standard KDE terminal interface. For development, they have Databases, which is basically LibreOffice database. Under Games, they have Steam installed. Sciences, they have Mathematics, which is LibreOffice Math. And then they've got their own section in the menu for their install and remove software. That is a quick and dirty rundown of Magia OS version 8. I like it. It's independent. It comes with all the important stuff, of course. Under the hood, it is set up nicely. It's definitely uh, a good independent one. So, TL Tears, tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. Tell me if you use it. If you don't use it, what you find it so great about it. Uh, if you're looking forward to using it and checking it out, doing a distro hop, tell me that and the reason why. Also, if you know there's something I forgot, don't be afraid to leave that message in the comments down below. And as always, if you guys have a subscriber suggestion that you would like me to take a look at or a video to do a video on, leave that in the comment down below or message me or email me. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of ways to get a hold of me. Other than that, guys, you guys keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay blessed and have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.